Hello, the overall audio is one of the most crucial aspects to a game, so it must be done right. Whether we're talking about music, sound effects, or transitions between sounds, we will cover everything you need to know about implementing audio in Godot 4.3 and beyond. Here is a complete breakdown of today's tutorial just in case you want to skip ahead. Now remember, if you have any questions at all during this tutorial, then please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to help you out. Subscribe to help YouTube push this audio tutorial to more aspiring game developers, and now let's begin. Okay, so before we get started, I think it's important for us to go over what we have in our game and the basics of what we're going to be covering, just so you have the basic understanding before we get into the more complex stuff like background audio and sound effects and creating whole systems to control all of that. So the basics that I want to go over is what we already have in our project, the nodes that we're going to be using today and the difference between them and the different resources that we have for streams and importing audio. So that's what I want to go over in this section because I think those are pretty important. So what do we have? Well, we have tile maps. We have a teleporter node, which basically just consists of two collision shapes or two area 2Ds, which have collision shapes, which kind of has a script right here that basically keeps track of the area or the biome that we're in. So if we're in the snow biome or the grass biome, we kind of keep track of that right there. And then we have this little player, which isn't anything special at all. But if we go to our world and we click play, you're going to see that we have animation on our player. We have a little animation within our tile map, and that is about it. Now, if we come up here, there is no collisions or anything, but if we come up here and we click E, we're going to end up being able to uh, come over here to the snow area and then so forth back to the grass. And that's all we have in our current project. Now, a couple things that I want to go over that are, I think, important for us to understand is, of course, the nodes that we're going to be using. So if we come up here to the world, and we click on this little plus button and we look up audio see it's already looked up but if we do look up audio you're going to see that we're going to have multiple different nodes we're going to have an audio listener an audio stream player 2d and an audio stream player now the audio stream player 2d and the audio stream player are different and we're going to end up using both of these today because they are completely different and com have completely different uses for example the audio stream player is going to play the audio in a global sense it doesn't matter where you're located on the map it's going to play at the exact same settings as it's set to so this would be good for background music menu buttons or and stuff like that right but the audio stream player is going to play in a positional area for example if we wanted this campfire to have a positional audio we put the positional audio and we put its position right here on top of the campfire and then we'll go over the settings later but we'll set the settings in a way that allows it to say okay well we want it to have a radius of 100 pixels so if the player is here at pixel 50 right 50 away from the campfire it's going to be at half volume if it's here it's going to be much louder it's going to be at full volume and if it's out here you're barely going to be able to hear it and then if the player is right here you're not going to be able to hear it at all and that's going to be done in a 3d circle just like this so if the player is here not going to be able to hear it if it's here barely hear it if it's here it's going to be much louder right but there's one thing that we have to go over with that because if we go back to these nodes that's what the audio listener is for if the player does not have an audio listener node basically meaning it's not listening for the audio stream player 2d it's not going to sound how you want it to sound so that's why we have to make sure we end up adding this in but i'll go over all this again later whenever we are actually using them and creating them within our game but I just want to kind of give you a brief overview of them now. And then if we go to our world and actually add in an audio stream player, this is going to be the same for all of the different nodes, but we have this stream setting, which is kind of where you import your audio. So for example, if we have this fresh fall and snow soundtrack, we can come and drop it into this area. And then this audio stream player is now set to play this soundtrack. But there are different things that I want to go over, different resources that we have by dropping this down. We have the synchronized, the interactive, and the playlist. Now these are all new within the Godot 4.3 update and that's why I really, really want to cover them. And some other important ones are the MP3, the web, the wave, because the wave and the MP3 are just basically normal audio files. For example, these right here are MP3 files. So whenever we input this, we're just using that MP3. But if you do any of these that aren't the little white square, which means it's not really a uh, resource, basically meaning are so these all have subcategories is what i'm trying to say so these all have subcategories within them whenever we add it we're going to end up having more options these are just a set category so for example if we do that mp3 well we're only going to be able to play that one track but if we go with the playlist we're going to be able to create a list of songs and we open this up you're going to see that we can have an add stream add stream add stream and we can basically drag in as many songs within a playlist as we want right and it will rotate through those we can shuffle through them just like a playlist would do 
but the other new ones are the interactive and the synchronized. Now, to keep it simple, because we're going to end up using the interactive one later, the interactive one is kind of like a manager node, right? So it's going to end up allowing you to import playlists, import solo tracks, import whatever you want, but allowing you to create transitions between all of them. So that's why it's really, really important. And this is one of the most crucial ones and one of my favorite out of the new update. And then synchronized is going to allow you to play multiple audio tracks basically in sync. For example, you have a horror game. You have a sound a soundtrack which is clapping and then you have a soundtrack which is stomping. And you want to play them at the exact same time in sync. You can do that within one single audio stream player by using the synchronized, right? So that's how you kind of do that. But those are kind of the different uh, stream settings that we can go over. But again, we're going to cover all of this later throughout the tutorial. But I just want to bring that up now. And then one more thing is the audio buses because again, we're going to go over this later. But we do want to create an audio bus now because I don't actually do it within the tutorial. That's why I want to do it right now. So audio buses. How do we want to do this? Well, we can come down here and we can say add bus, add bus. We want one bus, which is going to basically take all of our music and then we want one bus which is going to basically control all of our sound effects so we can set this up like this and then these are both going to funnel into the master which is then going to funnel into the speakers so we're going to set this up just like this and then go here save as and we want to just save this as our default audio bus layout right and then we can save that and then that will be saved and then we should be good to go now. So I want to first start off with this first section, which is going to be called the audio manager and node setup. It's basically just our setup scene. It's what we're going to use to set up the basics that we're going to need to even go about audio here in Godot. So first of all, we're going to need a global script. Second of all, we're going to need a audio manager node. So we can start with the audio manager node because it's going to be the simplest for now. We can go to our world and we can just add in a normal node, not a node 2D, not any other, other special node, just a node because the only thing that this node is going to be used for is it's going to act as like a folder or it's going to act as a parent to all of our other audio nodes that we're going to end up adding later on. What do we want to call this node? Well, we can just call it the world audio manager because it's going to be the main manager node for our entire project. And then we can go and add in a script, create this script, leave it as is for now because there isn't really much that we can do because we don't really have anything else in the game right now. But one more thing that I want to create before we get started is going to be a global audio script. So for that, we can go file new script. We can just call this the audio global.gd, create this new script. And within this new script, I'm going to start it off with a couple of variables, but we will probably most likely add on to this later. And we're going to end up using these variables later, but it's just good for us to create them now. So we don't have to worry about that as we're creating the audio itself. So we're going to use a var current biome because the biome of course is going to be for when we are switching between biomes we need to know what biome we're in so it's either going to be grass or it's going to be snow and this again is for the background music so when we're in this grass zone then we want to play the grass based music and then when we're in the snow zone we want to play that winter based music right and then we're going to have two more variables one is going to be for the basically the overall music volume and that's going to be an int. And then one more is going to be for the sound effects volume. And the reason that we're going to have these two variables within a global script is because we need to access these within our world audio manager because these variables are going to be the variables that are going to be adjusted when we create that custom slider later on in the video, right? So we can adjust the audio during runtime. These are going to be the variables that are going to basically completely correlate to the overall audio. And these are the numbers here that are going to end up changing the uh, setting on our audio bus volume for music and sound effects, right? So that's why this is important. But again, we're going to go over all that later when we actually get to that point. Right now that we have everything going, also real quickly, I just wanted to update this current biome within our teleporter script here, right? Within our process function, just so we can keep that global variable up to date with the rest of the game. Remember, the teleporter script here is just basically showing what um let's see i think it's what do we call it audio global the teleporter script here is just basically seeing uh what our current uh biome is right because we're teleporting from grass to snow snow to grass so it's basically keeping track of that for us so we can just equal it to the current biome node that's already within this uh 
script here because this should be up to date and then we can update that every single frame just to keep that uh, new script or that global script up to date completely just like it should be because we're going to end up using this global variable here to basically see what music we should be playing. Are we in the grass zone? Are we in the snow zone? What music do we need to be playing, right? So that's what that's for. But everything should be set up. Everything should be good to go. So now we're going to end up moving into creating the background music and creating different playlists and how and learning how to manage those playlists for different zones that we are in. And that is going to be a very, very important aspect of audio here in Godot. So let's move into that now. Okay, so creating background music here in Godot. Now, there's many ways that we can create background music, but the way that we're going to do it today is more of a complex, more of a modular, more of kind of, if you have a bunch of different audio tracks, but you want to play different audio tracks or certain audio tracks for certain areas of your project, right? So, of course, the most basic way to implement background audio is to go up here, type in the audio stream player, just the normal one, because remember the 2D is going to be positional based. So basically, if we get far enough away from that section or where the audio stream or that position of where the audio stream player is placed, we're not going to be able to hear it anymore. So we don't want to mess with that right now. That's going to be more for the environmental when we go over creating that campfire sound. So that's going to be really cool. But whenever we want to create background audio, we want to create the audio stream player, not the 2D, not the 3D, nothing like that, just the audio stream player because this is going to basically play the audio over the entire scene. So this is what you want to use, for example, button clicks for a menu, because you want the entire game to hear a button. You don't want to hear the button if you're close to the button, right? If that makes sense. Or for background audio, like we're going to use it for today. So we can click on this. We can add it to our world scene under our world audio manager. And then we can name this something like the background music player, because we're going to use this audio stream player here as our background music player right just like that now if we come over here we see a bunch of different settings in the inspector i'm going to start off by setting it to negative 20 volume just because it might blow our eardrums out when we first get the song in and we first start playing it because i don't know how loud the song is set to and i don't know how long the or how loud the obs recording is set to either so we're going to turn that down for now just until we can see how loud it is and if you can hear it or not but we have other settings down here. We have autoplay, we have playing. Playing is basically going to make it play right now, but there is no track, so that won't really do anything. Autoplay is important. We're gonna turn on autoplay because whenever we first start the game, it's background music. We want it to play from the start to the end of the game, right? So we're gonna set that to autoplay. And then we're going to send it from, not, the not to the master bus, but to the music bus that we created. So now it's gonna go through this bus before it gets to the master bus, if that makes sense. And again, I'm gonna go over this a lot more in depth when we get to that part of the video. But for now, the settings look fine. That is all you really need to know about is the uh, audio, is the autoplay, the volume, and the bus. That's all you need to know about right now for the basics, right? And then we're gonna obviously break it down a little bit more later on. But right now, that's all we need to know. Now, to create background music, we can come up here to the stream and we can end up adding in a MP3 file if you have an MP3 or a WAV file if you have a WAV uh, audio file, right? And then that will add in a single audio or that will add in a single song. But we don't want to have a single song, right? We want to have a playlist. So are we going to choose the audio stream playlist? Well, we want to have multiple playlists and we want to interact with the playlist. We want to be able to transition between those playlists. And we want to choose which one's playing based on variables, right? So we're actually going to go with the interactive because remember the synchronized here is not what we're looking for. The synchronized is going to play multiple tracks at the exact same time. They're going to play those multiple tracks in sync, but it's not going to be able to allow us to interact with it and switch between those uh, streams. So the interactive here is going to allow us if we click on the interactive, we open this up. It's going to allow us to have different clips. Now, I know it's called a clip and it's like, well, a clip is probably just like a sound effect or right? a sound effect of a song. Well, really, no, it's a entire song. Right. And a clip can also be a playlist because if we open this and we click on add clip, you're going to see what is going to pop up. It's going to pop up where we can add in a name and we can add in a stream, which is just what we had up here. So now we've basically expanded the stream. So now we're going to end up being able to, let's say, we want the first clip to be for our grass music. What do we want our grass music to consist of? Well, we can end up adding in an audio stream playlist. So once we add in a playlist, we can open this up. We can click on basically add a stream 
and we can load in all the songs that we want. So I'm going to go down here into our file system, go into our music, and you're going to see this Island Dream song right here is going to be our grass music, and the Fresh Fallen Snow is going to be the snow music. Now, these, uh, both of these files were from the YouTube audio library, so if you want to go check them out, these are the exact names, and they're by Chris here, if you want to go check all that out. But for this, we can drag this in to our uh, element down here, and it's going to be part of the playlist. Let's say we had two songs. Let's say this was the second song of this playlist. Well, we can add that there, and you're going to see you can do this forever and have as many songs as you want. And because it's a playlist, but for this, we only have one song, but because it's a playlist, we can turn on shuffle and we can go through those songs, not in order, but in a random order to make it more different each time. Right. And then the fancy part about this interactive is, is that we can have multiple streams. So we can come down here or we can have multiple clips. I guess it would be. So we can come down here. We can add in another clip. This clip may be our snow music, right? And then for our snow music, we may have another playlist. So we can open up this playlist. We can add in a stream. This first stream will be our Fresh Fallen Snow, which is going to be, again, the only song within this playlist because that's all we have for this tutorial. And then we can turn on Shuffle, for example. Of course, Shuffle is not going to do anything because we only have one song. But if you did have multiple songs, that would work very, very well. Now, down here in the resources, we have transitions. Transitions are really, really, really important because if we come down here to the parameters, you're going to see that we have switched the clip. So this is how we're going to switch between the clips. So let's say, okay, well, let's want to switch to snow. Well, it doesn't drop down. We cannot drop it down. Why is that? Because we haven't set up our transitions yet. So it is very important to go over transitions. And if we click on the edit transitions, you're going to see that it's going to pop up something. This may look a little bit confusing. And that's completely understandable. But what do we do? So if you see this from and this to, this is basically from this clip to this clip. So let's say we're going from the grass music to the snow music. That means it would be this box, right? From grass to snow. So we can say, okay, we can set up some, uh, some variables, some functions for our, or basically some, I guess, variables for our transition. So we can transition from... Basically, if you want it to be the next beat in the song, I'm going to say immediately. Most likely, you'd most likely you'd want it immediately. I don't know in really any instance where you would want something else except maybe clip end. But then again, I don't really know why that would... If you're trying to transition between them, you almost want to transition instantly, right? So I usually would go with immediate. Transition two, we can transition to the same position. So let's say, for example um we're at the 45 second mark of our grass music if we transition we're going to transition to the 45 second mark of our snow music right so it's not going to restart the clip every single time we transition i like to keep that as the same position so that we start somewhere random in the song so when we fade into the song it actually kind of sounds pretty good right so we can say okay fade let's cross fade it and we can say fade for one beat that's fine and then we can end up enabling this transition right here. And then we can go from snow music to grass music and enable that same transition just like that. And actually that used the wrong fade mode. So we can go cross fade there and then enable that right there. So now our transitions are set up. So if we click OK and we come down here to the switch to parameters, if we click on this, you're going to see that it should, let's see, should allow us to switch between clips. I don't know why it's not. Let's reopen this here. Okay, there we go. So all we had to do was click out and reopen the inspector. But you're going to say if we click on grass music, it should start playing, right? Or if we click on the playing tab. And there you go. You're going to see that. I don't know if you can hear that, if it's loud enough through the recording. But you can kind of see down here that there is audio playing. That music is playing. And if we were to go down to snow music, you're going to hear it transition and it's going to fade into the other one, right? And up here you can see where it's at in the song and where it's at in the song on this one. Let's go back to grass music. And I'm going to be quiet real quick and I'm going to turn up the audio just so you can hear it a bit better. And I'm going to show you the transition that we do have. Right. So that's very good. 
So we're going to stop the playing now, but that is working. Now we just need to be able to implement that into our game so that when we are playing our game, we can transition between the musics. But that is the music here set up, right? So let's kind of explain what we have. In our stream, we have a interactive, right? So this is going to end up allowing us to import multiple clips. In each clip, we've imported a or we've created a playlist resource. And inside of each playlist, we have added all of the elements or all of the music choices that we want to use, right? So that's how this is kind of going together. And remember, if you have any questions throughout this tutorial at all, then please let me know in the, dis or in the comments because I will be sure to help you out. And I hope everything so far is going smooth and I hope that you are being able to understand what is going on. But again, remember, if we click play and we go in the game, we're not really going to have music. I mean, we are going to have music because we turned on autoplay. But if we go up here and we transition, it's not going to transition. So how are we going to go about that? But well, that's what the world audio manager node right here is for. So within this node, what are we going to want to set up? Well, first of all, we need to create an export variable because we need to get this background music player within our script. So we can create an export var. And this is going to be the bg music uh, player right and this is going to be an audio stream player just like that we can come out here to the world audio and we can assign this to our new variable and now in the script what are we going to want to do well in the script we're going to want to create basically first of all Get, we need to get that uh, biome because that's how we're going to be transitioning. So we can say, okay, well, var current biome is going to be a string, right? And then we can come down here to our ready function. And within our ready function, we're just going to say, okay, well, let's set that current biome variable to the global audio or audio global, the audio global dot current biome right the variable that we set earlier now down here in the process function we're going to want to be able to say well okay if we're in the current biome or i mean if the current biome that we've set up here in the ready function which is basically the starting biome the biome that we're currently in is not equal to the global current biome because remember the global current biome the one in the global script updates every single frame through our teleporter script right so if that's updating every frame and this one's not updating every frame because we're not we're not calling that in the process we're calling that based off the scene that we start in and it's not updating every frame then eventually they're not going to be equal to each other and if they're not equal to each other that's how we know that we've switched into another biome that's how we know that we need to update our music for the scene right so down here in the physics process we can say okay well if the current biome is not equal to the audio global dot current biome that means we've switched scenes at some point then we want the current biome to equal the global dot current biome just in case we end up switching back right and then we want to also call an update music function right so update music for scene because now we know that we do have a new biome that we're in so we need to go and update the music because the music's no longer going to be correct so down here in this update music scene we can do something very, very, very simple. We can just go, okay, well, var the current biome music. Basically, the music that we want to switch into needs to be a string of the current biome because remember, we just changed the current biome to the new biome plus music. And why is that? Why is that going to end up working, right? Well, we're saving grass over here in our teleporter. We're, end up, we're saving grass or we're saving right here grass or we're saving snow remember in our uh audio here we named this grass music snow music so if we come back to our world audio manager and we create that current biome which is either going to be grass or snow and we add that to music we're going to create the perfect string to match one of our clips and then we're going to know how to play that clip right so how is that going to actually work well down here in our parameters we can actually call the parameters so we can call our background music player and then we can go within to the parameters switch to clip and then we can change it based on the string that we're creating right here right so let me show you how we're going to do that we can say background music player dot or actually it's going to be a bracket 
parameters, which we're going to have to type out all the way. So parameters slash switch to clip. And a lot of people may not know how to do this. So if you did not know how to do this, then you're learning something new today. But if you do something like this, you can access the parameters of that node, right? Just like this. And then now we can change that, this parameter here, we can change that to our current biome. So basically we're changing the uh, clips through the transitions, which is a very, very cool technique. And then if we were to click play, everything should actually come together and it should work. So you hear the music, not sure how loud it is on y'all's end, but you can hear the music there. If we come up here and then we go to the snow area, you're going to see how it transitions into uh, the snow music. And then we can go back and it transitions back to the grass. Now I'm going to mute myself real quick and I'm going to turn the audio for the game up just to make sure that you guys can hear what is going on there. Okay, so I hope that you were able to hear that. I hope you're able to understand kind of what's going on there and kind of how this background music system is functioning. And if you're not, then please remember, ask me in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. But now I want to kind of move into the sound effects because the sound effects are the really cool part of Godot, right? That is where the magic of your sound happens within your game. For example, this fire, we want a sound to be coming off of this fire, but we don't want the sound to be able to be heard from way over here. Instead, we want it to kind of stop being heard from right here. So we're going to go over how to set all that up. That means we're going to go over the listening node, right? So up here, you see that we have the audio listener and then we have the audio stream player. We're going to use both of these right now because this is positional audio. This is overall audio. And then this is going to be basically showing us how we can listen to this audio stream player in a 3D space, if that makes sense. So let's move into that right now and let's go over everything we need to know about sound effects here in Gundo. And remember, if you have any more questions about background music, because I know that we kind of briefly went over background music here, but we are creating a system. So if you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to help you out. But let's move into sound effects and kind of get to know those. Okay, so let's move into sound effects and the environmental one first, then we're going to go over player sound effects. But real quick, I want to mention that whenever you create these buses down here, it is very, very important to go up here and save the buses as sort of a bus template. So we can call this as whatever we want. We can just say our default bus temp, right? Because this is going to be the template for our buses. If we save this, you're going to see down here, it's going to save. So whenever you exit out of Godot and you reload Godot, it loads back up. Because if not, it actually won't load back up. So make sure you save it because it is very, very important to do that. And now let's move into the sound effects. So how are we going to go about sound effects? Well, if we go up to our World Audio Manager node and we click on the little plus button, we type in audio. Remember how we have the audio listener and the audio stream player 2D? We're going to have to make use of both of these right now to create this 3D or this positional space audio. Right? So... Remember how we went over that this is like overall audio and there's no position base for it. It doesn't matter where you are in the game. You're going to hear this the exact same. This one is different. It depends where you are close to this node, right? So if we add this node in, you're going to see that this node actually has a position. So the other node, this one right here, does not have a position. There's no position on it because it doesn't matter. It's a global audio, right? It goes for everywhere in the entire project or in the entire scene, let me say. But this audio stream player does have a position. So we can move it around and we can place it where we want it to. And it's going to originate audio from that area. And if we look at this max distance right here, that is how far that you'll be able to hear that audio from its position. So that's what's really cool about the audio stream player 2D. So if we come down here and we change the position to maybe 100, just so we can kind of separate it from all of these other nodes over here, we click on the little move icon and we move this down to the campfire because this is where we want the sound to be coming from, right? It's a campfire sound. We want the sound to originate from the campfire. So we can come up here and we can just rename this audio real quick to the campfire F or SFX. So campfire sound effects. And then we have all these settings over here in the inspector, which I do want to go over. But first, let's add in our actual sound effect. What is our campfire sound effect, right? So that's going to be what we're going to implement here into our stream. And 
if we drop down this stream, we see all these different options. What are we going to use, right? Well, we have campfire sound effects. It's going to be one sound effect because it's going to be the campfire. It's going to be the burning sound effects, right? It's not going to be a playlist. It's not going to be synchronized. There's not going to be multiple sound effects. Well, there actually could be, right? So if you are having multiple sounds that you want your fire to make, maybe you have a layer one and a layer two to your sound file and you want to play them at the exact same time because they're two separate files then that's all you and then you'll end up using the synchronized right here, right? But for us, we're going to end up using the audio stream uh, MP3 because if we drop down our sound effects over here, you're going to see that all of these are MP3 files. So if we actually take our campfire sound here, drag it and drop it into our stream area, you're going to see that it's automatically going to load in and we're going to be good to go. Um, you're going to see that, well, you can't really loop one sound and that seems kind of weird, right? Well, you actually can. It's just the weird, it's weird how you have to go about it. You have to come down here to parameters and then you can actually turn looping on just like that. And then of course, since this is a campfire and it's not going to turn on or turn off, I mean, it would turn on and turn off if we had a way to do that, but we'd have to take the flame away, right? Before we want to turn the sound off. But since the flame is always going, we can just turn this to autoplay. But in the case that you did have it to where you wanted to turn it on and off based on if the player sets the fire or lights the fire, then you would call this playing right here the exact same way that you would end up calling, for example, an animated sprite animation. How you say animated sprite dot play, and then, you know, just like that. So it would be the exact same way right here with this campfire. For example, if we were to go to the audio and we were to say something like, okay, well, um, let's get the um, campfire sound effects dot play. Like that's what you would do to start it and then to end it or to stop it, to bring it to a stop, you can just do campfire sound effect stop, right? So that's how you do it. So when you want to stop the sound, you would call this. When you want to start the sound, then you would just say dot play, right? And that's how you would go about starting and stopping in or during runtime from the code. But for example, we don't have to do that today in our personal or in this project right here. But if you do have to do that, then that is exactly how you go about that. And then of course, we're going to end up having this max distance and this antitude. Now, uh, what this right here is, is basically how fast the sound drops off. So if you're higher or a higher number, it's going to drop off quicker. If you're a lower number, then it's going to end up dropping off slower, if that makes sense. So it's a fire. We maybe want to just do it like something like this so that it drops off and it's super loud when we're right on top of it. But even when we're right here, it's a little less and it's not like as loud as it was. Right. And then whenever we're way over here, we can still barely hear it, but just not hear it, you know, we are, I guess we wouldn't really hear it. We just barely hear it, if that makes sense, right? And then, of course, the max distance, which for now we can just start with 50 just to see how that sounds. And everything else right here, you don't really need to worry about right now because this is what is important. I'm actually going to bump up this volume right here because our background music is actually pretty loud. So we can actually drop this for now down to negative 40 just so that we can hear the fire and not have to worry about the music right now, right? So if we click play on the world and we see what happens, you're going to see the music is still there, but it's very, very quiet. And we come down here to the fire and that's actually going to be very, very loud. I'm sorry if that was a bit too loud. I'm going to jump down to 10, right? And then we can go back to our world and you're going to see how it gets louder and louder. And I'm actually going to mute real quick just so y'all can hear that fully. Okay, so that all looks good, but actually if we click play one more time and I show you something, you see that it works perfect from this side, right? It works very, very good, but if we get to the other side, it's always going to be at max volume. So how do we fix that? Well, the reason that's happening is because our player is not picking up the audio fully because it doesn't have one of the listener nodes. So to fix that, we can just go over here to our player. We can just add in a audio listener 2D just like that. And we can just click enable right there. And then you're going to see if we go back to our world, our player scene is going to be able to pick up audio based on where the player scene is located and based on where the audio stream 2Ds are located. So if we click play, you're going to see that it works from this side now. But it also works from the other side as well.
So that is environmental sound effects, and that came out very, very nicely. But we need to go over how you're going to end up implementing, for example, player sound effects, because those are a whole different ball game, And you're going to have to have basically control scripts, just like you do right here, that are going to control the sounds that the player is using, kind of like whenever you have a player animation script and you have an animation handler, right? It's kind of the same exact thing, but instead it's going to be for audio. And let me uh, remind you of something. So environmental audio is actually very good for basically anything that you're going to have in your scene, anything except for music, menus, stuff like that, right? But the reason it's good is because it's going to basically show where it's located and it's going to give depth perception, for example, enemies, whatever it may be, and players, exactly. You know, you may create the player and you're going to end up adding that. You're going to say that's going to have no difference. Well, if it is a multiplayer game, then it would have a difference, right? So that's kind of how you have to think about it. But the player, you don't want, for example, the player to be making sounds all the way across the map. You want the player to be making sounds near the player and nowhere else. So that's why you would end up using that, even if it's a solo single player game, just for the idea of it, right? Just so the player is creating sounds near it and not far away from it, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. But let's move into sound effect tutorial for the player and kind of go over how you would do that. Okay, so real quickly, I actually went and set everything for the player up because it is a bit time consuming and it, but it wasn't, it didn't take long. It maybe took me about five minutes, but I didn't want to walk you, have to walk you through that and waste your time because it is most likely probably easier for me to just show you how it's working and show you kind of explain it. So let me show you the result. Now, keep in mind, these files right here are the grass and the jump. They don't really sound like grass and jump. They are grass and jump. Like they sound like it, but they sound like they sound funky. They don't fit the game because they're not supposed to be there, right? I just wanted to do this just as a little showcase or a little example. But if we do go and click play, you're going to see that we're going to have that music. We have a grass now when we walk. And then when we jump. But when we come down by the fire, the fire and everything like that still works and it all sounds and goes together very well. Now, let me show you how we're actually doing this though. So in our player, we end up adding in a audio stream player 2D. I renamed it to the player audio stream. And then I ended up creating a interactive audio resource, right? And then inside of that interactive, I created two clips. I created a walking clip and I created a jumping clip, right? And with these, I just ended up pulling in the sound file. These are both MP3 files, so there's nothing special going on about them. Down here, we didn't really change anything at all because remember, we don't want it to autoplay because we want to play it when we want to play it. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier with the campfire. We're only going to play this when we want to end up playing it, and we end up doing that through the audio uh, or through the script in here. We're at the very, let me show you exactly what we added to the player script. So we ended up adding this export variable, which is a player audio stream. It's just an export variable. And then I imported that audio stream player that we created down here that stores the audio. And then down here, I created a function at the very bottom, which is basically saying, okay, well, we're going to update player audio and we're going to end up passing through the audio name that we want to play based on where we're calling it from in the code. Right. For example, up here in the jump, whenever we play our jump animation, we end up calling the player audio jump. Whenever we call our run animation, we end up calling the player audio walking. And whenever we call our idle animation, we end up calling the player audio none, which is basically going to bring it to a stop because we don't have a idle audio. Right. So down here, you can kind of see, OK, well, if the audio is equal to none, then we're going to say, OK, well, player audio stream dot stop. Right. And just stop all playing of it. So it doesn't make any sound. If the audio name is not equal to basically the basically what this is doing is getting the current whatever the current thing that is playing because we're going to come down here to parameters and you know if we click down here click walking that means walking is the current one if we click jumping then jump is the current uh, audio being played so if basically the audio name that we're trying to call is equal to what's already playing then we're not going to do anything but if the audio name is not equal to what's currently playing then we're going to go within this if statement and say okay well player audio stream dot play just in case we had it stopped and then we're going to end up switching it right here with the parameters uh function that we went over earlier and switch it to the audio name that we want for example whatever we end up passing through is the one that we're going to want and this basically checks to make sure we're not already playing that audio so if we're not already playing that audio then we're going to switch to that audio if that makes sense so whenever we are playing we can go about the entire game and we have all of our sound effects.
and everything comes together very very nicely there so that's kind of how you go over player effects i know that was very very short but i hope you were able to kind of understand how we go about that and if you want to look at the code a little bit more basically all we have is this variable and we end up calling that function at where we want or where we kind of call the animations and then we end up doing it this function right here and once again, this is set up with an interactive and then just two clips with MP3 files within them. So hopefully that makes sense. I didn't make any changes to this settings over here as well. Actually, we need to change the bus to the sound effects so that whenever we do go over that in a minute, we can change the volume of it along with the campfire and along with the music and everything like that. But now I want to move in and I want to kind of explain the audio buses a little bit more in depth. Okay, so the audio buses, what are the important aspects that you need to know? So, of course, we know that we, through these audio streams, we end up uh, outputting it into a certain bus, whether that be sound effects, music, etc., right? But we have these two buses that we can end up changing the volume on, right? And then we also can end up adding effects on these buses. But let's say, for example, just to kind of get an understanding of how you would end up using these buses, let's say you had a certain level and you end up having an earthquake happen on your game how would you create an effect onto the music like how would you go about creating an effect onto that music that is currently playing would you go here and create an effect like let's say you wanted to add an, an amplify effect or a distortion effect to the music that's being played during the earthquake in the game well you wouldn't do this right because you wouldn't want to mess with all the other music that you have in the game right so what you would do is you create a new bus and inside of this bus you'd add in that amplify effect or i mean i guess it would be that distortion effect that we want for the earthquake and you can change the settings for that over here right so we have all the settings for the distortion and then we don't want to send this to the master instead we want to send it to the music right so then whatever comes out of this bus here is going to go into the music as normal audio and then the music is not going to have any changes on it then it's going to be go go to the master. So what this is doing is it's creating a distortion effect and an amplify effect on the music that we're inputting into this bus, but it's not doing that to all music. And since it's still music being passed through this bus, we're still sending it through the music. So if we did want to end up having the volume changed on the overall music, that is still going to apply to what goes on in this bus because it does end up getting passed through that music as well. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But basically, what you need to understand is that these are kind of just like little boxes that run the audio. So the audio is going to run through them, and then it's going to go into this box and run through it, and then it's going to go to the speakers. Basically, that's what you should understand. So it's really a, a not too complex, but I do want to make sure that you do understand kind of what's going on there. So it's not just like boxes that are all put together and like weird, right? But they are all interacting with each other. And going through them for example that's why i wanted to explain this bus so if you wanted to add a distortion you wouldn't add it to the music but you add it to a different bus send that music through this bus and not this bus but send it through this bus then it will end up going through this bus and it will have all the settings that you want all music to have anyway right so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense but now i want to move into actually creating the scroll wheel so we can affect this real time and change all of our music and all of our sound effects at once during runtime with a little slidey bar now to create these custom scroll wheels, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to go up here to the very top and we're going to create a brand new scene. Now this scene is going to be a control node and under this control node we're going to have two different H scroll bars which are horizontal scroll bars and we're going to want two of these, right? And if we go to the 2D area of this scene, we can say, okay, well this control node is going to be, we can call it, I guess, our settings menu, right? Because of course we're only going to have these audio settings but we can just call it our settings menu for now and just like that and then this first scroll bar is going to be the music scroll bar and this bottom scroll bar is going to be the sound effects scroll bar right so these are going to be two different settings and we're going to be able to adjust the sound effects and the music based on whatever we want to adjust it to in the game so we can kind of test out what works best right so there's something that, that I want to go over. So for music, and if we go to our world and we go to our music, you can see that our audio is already set to negative 40. If it was at zero, it I mean, if it was at zero, it'd be super, super, super loud. So what I actually wanted to do, actually, let's play it and let's see what it sounds like at zero, right? 
right? Very, very loud. So we'll say zero is going to be our max volume. That's going to be the very, very max volume. So to do that, we can come over here to our music scroll bar and we can say, let's set the max value to zero and then let's set the minimum value to maybe how low do we want to be able to go? Maybe we'll go to negative 30, right? Something like this. So basically we're able to go down to negative 30 decibels or we can go up all the way up as high as zero decibels because zero is still pretty loud for this certain music that we have imported. The step here is going to be basically how large the little slider icon is. And if we come over here and we drag this, you're going to see that we can extend the size of this. And you're going to see that it's already going to be at the max value because the max value is zero. So maybe we can set it at negative 20 for now. We can change the page to maybe two. Right, just to make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to grab when we're in the game. And then we can adjust this to where we want it to show on the viewport. This purple is the viewport, so this is where the camera is, right? So we can drag this down here. That will be our music. The bigger one will be our music. And then up here, the sound effects scroll bar, we can have it a little bit smaller and we can have it just below the music like this. And we can say, okay, well, maybe we want the music to be able to go from, I mean the sound effects to be able to go from negative 20 to about 20, right? And then because 20 is, because of its its sound effects, 20 is not as loud as the music, but it's still pretty loud. And negative 20, you're basically not gonna be able to hear the sound effects at all. So that's why we're gonna pick these numbers. We can set the page to two so that we can drag that slider as well. And then we can set the current value to, I guess, zero for now, that is fine. And that all looks good, right? So now that we have that, we have our little UI set up. If we save this scene as our settings menu, go back to our world and import this setting scene under a canvas layer, right? This has to be done under a canvas layer. So it follows the viewport, not a canvas group, but a canvas layer. And then we put that UI within our canvas layer we can rename this to ui just so we can keep everything organized and then we go and click play you're going to see what happens that is very very loud i am very sorry about that let me turn that down on my obs recording so it's not going to be actually turned down in the engine it's going to be returned down for the recording but you can kind of see that these scroll bars right here now work but they don't work for the music and they don't actually change the volume of it. So how are we going to go about fixing that? Well, let's go add a script to our settings menu. We'll just call it settings menu.gd for now. And down here, we can go and create something within our process function, which is just going to be the volume update. And it's going to basically grab the value of our scroll bars and transport it to that global script, right? So we can say, okay, well, volume update. And then we can create this function, volume update. And then we can say, okay, well, var music volume is going to equal to that music scroll bar. And then we're going to have var sound effects volume, which is going to equal to that sound effects scroll bar, right? Just like that. And then down here, we can say, okay, well, let's go to the audio global script. So it's the audio global script, which is the global script that we created. And then we can change that music volume variable to equal whatever the music volume dot value is, right? So we're basically gonna grab the value of this scroll bar and then we can do the exact same thing for the sound effects. So we can say, okay, well, let's get that global script and then let's change the sound effects volume to whatever the sound effects volume value is equal to, right? So that looks good. Now we can go back into our world. We can go back into our audio manager script and then now we need to create something that's going to actually update the volume real time, right? So the way that we're going to end up doing this is we could actually have done this from our settings menu, but let's think about if we had more settings. We don't want to overcrowd the settings menu. Instead, we want to keep the settings menu as clean as possible in case we have, for example, a save button and whatever other buttons we may have right in your settings. But we, so we're just going to transfer all of this to the global audio script, right? So then we can take these from our audio, our world audio manager, and we can update that within the world, right? So we can come down here and we can say, okay, well, let's get function and let's call this the update volume function within our audio manager, just so we can keep everything organized. That's the only reason we're transferring it over through that global script. And then we can say, okay, well, in the update volume, what do we want to happen? Well, we can get var the background music index, right? The background music index is going to basically be this bus right here. So background music index, whoops, 
let's see. The background music index is going to be equal to, we got to get the audio server, right? Which is the overall uh, audio server for our project. And then we can get bus index and then whatever the name of the bus is equal to, which is music. So now this variable here is equal to this exact bus. So it's going to be easy for us to change that variable or for that volume now. And then we can also create a sound effects index, right? And this sound effects index is going to be created in the exact same way. Let's get the audio server. Then let's get the bus index and let's get the SFX bus just like that. And then we can say, okay, well, audio server, right? This is where we're actually going to change the volume. So we can say audio server dot set bus volume dot DB uh, is going to basically we have to get our bus and then we have to change it to whatever we want to change or so basically we have to get the index so for example what audio or what bus in our audio server do we want to change we want to change first the background music index and what do we want to change it to we want to change it to the audio global dot music volume right we want to equal it to that global script and then again we can do the exact same thing for the sound effects so audio server dot set the bus volume right we want to set the sound effects index to the audio global sound effects uh sound effects volume right whoops volume just like that Okay, so now we need to make sure we call this update volume function within our process function up here so that we can update our volume based on that global script every single frame of our game. And then if we were to click play, everything should work theoretically. We have music. If we try and turn it up, try and turn it down, nothing happens at all. So that is not good. So. Let's see what's happening. Okay, well, debugger, whoa, debugger went crazy. There's over 3,000 messages down there, and it looks like it is all the same. Line 25, line 26 of our audio manager. So that's these two lines. And it's saying basically the bus is set to negative one. So, which means it's not finding the bus, even though it found the bus here, right? This get bus index is returning negative one, meaning there is no bus there and there's nothing for it to find which is actually a very, very weird error that I haven't got. So I'm gonna go debug this real quick and see what I can find. Okay, so I went and did some research and I found out what is actually going on. So this is a engine problem, not a us problem. If we come up here to project, project settings, and we go to the audio area and then go to buses, you can kind of see that the default bus layout, basically the layout that it's using, the layout that is connected to the audio server is connected to absolutely nothing. Why is that? I have no idea. That should already be preset for us, but it wasn't. So we can come up here and we can load in our default bus template that we created earlier and we saved. So remember, if you have not saved your audio template, make sure you do that because if you are getting this error, come up here to project settings, audio buses, and then you can import that template there, right? Remember, this is how you save it. We went, went over it earlier, but we can save as and just save it just like that and then drag that file into that project piece in the project settings. And then if we were to click play, everything should come together and we should get a lot less debugger errors now. And you can see that that is true. We get not really anything except for this update player audio, which clip not found none, which is an easy fix. And we'll go over that in just a second. But you can kind of see that. I don't know how loud it is for y'all, but if we turn up the music, you can kind of see that that gets louder. And if we turn it down, it gets lower, but I'm going to go mute real quick and I'm going to show you all the different functions that it does have just so y'all can hear it better. But yeah, it looks like everything is working and everything has came together very, very well. Now, this little error that we have down here can be fixed by just going to the player. And instead of this being an if statement, we just change that to an else if statement because you can kind of see that it's saying, okay, well, the 
clip not found none. So basically it's trying to pass this through and this none is getting here because it's calling the if function twice because it's saying, okay, let's stop it. But then we're also gonna play it again and then we're gonna call it and we're gonna try and play clip number none, which isn't a thing. So it ends up basically not playing anything at all. So now if we do that, you can kind of see that we come back and it's not gonna try and play none anymore. And that error is going to be gone, right? So that's kind of how you can get rid of that right there. That's just a little processing error that we had. But everything looks good and everything works perfectly fine. And this looks like a amazing little project that we went and created today. So I hope you were able to learn a lot about audio buses, audio in Godot, sound effects, music, all different sorts of stuff, all the different nodes, all the different resources that you use over here with the audio stream player. Hopefully you do have a better understanding of all of that now. And if remember, if you do have any questions at all, then please, please, please let me know in the comments because I do want to help you out as best as I possibly can. But remember, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless you all. And until next time, bye-bye.